This session begins with the party entering the Tomb of the Serpent Kings. So I'll start by saying that this is a very popular module for people in the OSR. So if you don't want spoilers for it, then I recommend skipping this episode. As I will be going through it and giving some of my thoughts, at least for the first area in the dungeon. Soft daylight spilt into the hallway of the tomb, revealing a stone passage weathered by the elements. Moss clung to the stonework, between its cracks hairs and roots of trees spread out. The party stepped within, Ivan eager to see what remained of this lost civilization. The tunnel was long and ended in a large double door, secured with a thick stone bar resting on iron pegs. On the north and south walls of the tunnel, part way down were two doorways. Ivan pushed forward with the group behind. He checked in the northern chamber and saw a wooden coffin. Besides the smell of dampness, this was all that remained in the room. The first southern chamber, adjacent, was identical. Frank and Yord moved into the northern chamber. Frank opened the lid, which revealed a clay statue of a snake-headed warrior. Frank, chaotic as ever, threw the lid to the side of the room, shattering it. And Yord decided to heartily hit the clay statue on the head, causing it to shatter and green poisonous gas to burst out into the chamber. It was immediately inhaled by the pair, but it did not harm them enough to kill. Inside, Yord found a golden snakehead amulet, which he took and pocketed. The party, now wary of the traps, used a long pole to break open the clay statue in the southern chamber. Blank was very suspicious of robbing the graves of these ancient serpent people and decided not to partake and wouldn't even touch the golden amulets to begin with. In the next pair of chambers, they found a similar set of coffins. In the northern coffin, there was a scholarly snake man statue and in the southern, a sorcerer, the statue of which was wearing a shiny silver ring. Ivan cast Detect Magic and the ring began to glow. Immediately, he requested the party rinse and repeat their earlier tactic and as soon as the poison dissipated, he clutched the ring in awe at it. After a short debate about the nature of the ring, Ivan decided to put it on his pinky finger, which then transformed into a forked claw-like nail. The ring was tight and hard to take off. They also found the same gold amulets that were in the other coffins in these two. The party rested for a short amount of time and debated about pressing further. They had come for Florin Ebonhood and there had been no sign of her here, and the large door that was ahead of them looked rather ominous. Why would it be barred from the outside? unless it was keeping something locked in, the party discussed. They decided that they would try and find out what was in the next room by chiseling a hole through the stone door using an iron spike and a hammer. And so hours passed with Ivan chiseling away. Yurd slept in a backpack and the retainers stuck by Ivan, while Frank and Blank kept watch at the entrance of the dungeon. As luck would have it, their watch was uninterrupted. Once the hole was carved out, Yord peered through with his dark vision and saw a large chamber, the walls of which were decorated elegantly with serpentine symbols. In hopes of treasure, they decided to push forward. Ivan and his two retainers lifted the heavy bar and as they did, it set off a trap. A hammer swung down from the ceiling. Ivan used Atfried as a springboard to push himself further forward. Ivan and Rose then hit the floor and soon were courted in a shower of blood the remains of Atfried, who was struck by the large hammer and instantly killed. The rest of the party stood horrified as they watched the trap return to its original position, blood dripping down. Frank and Blank then pushed on, seeing three coffins in the north of this large regal chamber. They decided to crack them open, and inside they found snake-headed skeletons, each wearing a golden amulet and as Frank pried it from the neck of the skeleton, they all jumped to life. Blank was struck and knocked down by two skeletons, while the third one missed its attack against Frank, who then sprinted back towards the rest of the group. Ivan and Brawls also retreated into the hallway behind Yord, as Yord declared they had a plan. Yord pulled out a 10-foot pole, and as the skeletons chased Frank through, Yord pushed the iron pegs which set the trap off and then the trap swung down as a trio of skeletons crossed the doorway and they were crushed immediately by the massive hammer. Blank luckily survived his stabbing and was fed a healing portion from Frank. Bros, under the orders of Ivan, inspected the chamber to the south of this regal tomb and found a grotesque eldritch snake statue, like a half-breed mutant of a snake and a toad. 
whose legs formed into a mess of intestines. And to the east of this are dripping and cracks, a secret passage. Having seen their fair share of dungeon and death, and not having any signs of Florin here, the party decided that they should head back to town. And so they made their way along the road, rested under the hanging tree, and eventually found their way back to Restorn and some much needed rest. However, the ring that Ivan wore caused pain to shoot through his arm and the poison of it almost killed him as he realized the ring was cursed. After a day's rest, Ivan headed to Demdike to ask for help. She was able to give him an antidote to ease the pain of the poison, but she only had one vial. Also on this day, Blank decided to earn some money by hosting an archery competition. He bought a box of apples and lined them up on the side of a fountain in the center of town. Five silver was the entry fee and the prize was five gold, which came from his own pocket. After time spent venturing through the village advertising, he was only able to get two contestants as well as himself. One of the contestants was Yord, who requested not to be paid in five gold, but instead rewarded in eggs. The other contestant was a young trapper named Rory. Late in the day, they fired their arrows. Fur to hit five apples would be declared the winner. After a close match, Rory took the victory. Following the competition, they decided to chat with him and managed to convince the young archer to join them as a retainer. After Ivan returned, he debated what to do with his cursed ring that was stuck on his finger and decided it would have to go. In the tavern bedroom, Frank, using his axe, sliced off the finger, which wriggled and then turned into a snake, but left the cursed ring behind. We ended the session with Ivan having a bloody bandaged hand and the party sat discussing their next moves. They wanted more experience before delving deeper into the serpent tomb and so they decided their next course of action would be to go to Caldwell Castle and free it from the goblins. And so there we have it, the party went into a dungeon and I think they did actually really well for this being the first true dungeon experience. And they call the Tomb of the Serpent Kings a learning dungeon and it definitely is. All of the pieces that the PDF talks about, setting things up for then the players to be able to know what to do next, right? So to suspect things, it, it all occurred, in including, which I was actually quite surprised about, the trap being used to kill the skeleton serpents. That was, I actually didn't expect that to happen. And then as soon as it thing uh, start, as soon as the fight started out, and Yord said to us, you know, right, I've got a plan get them to run towards us frank uh and then said can i reach the pegs with the 10 foot pole if i'm like stood to the side of it and i was like yeah you know what you're small you can move to the side and it would swing down without hitting you um so you can you know reach out ping and then step back and you'd be able to get it and i was actually really happy with that so much that i awarded them um some extra xp for creative thinking the false tomb sadly doesn't have too much gold in it um, the book says that for it's expected that 200 GP is enough to level up characters. So I increased everything by uh, 10. So each amulet, rather than being worth uh, just one GP, I think it is, I made them worth 10 GP. And so they got, what, 70 gold pieces for the false tomb area, which is the first kind of area of this dungeon. Yeah. Uh, what else? Death saving throws was a thing. Uh, Blank got uh, knocked down and should have actually died in this session. However, I felt really kind of uh, bad about this and I'm a little regretful because I told myself I'd try and be a more neutral GM for this game. But I decided that I couldn't just have him die and lose another character, especially because uh, we've he's only just got Blank really, right? He's played one session of Blank. And... With it being a newer group, it takes a while to be able to create characters and we're playing pen and paper. And so I was like, God, if he dies, that is just going to be another like 20, 30 minutes of us, uh, of, of him going through and picking a character out and making something and then reintroducing them. What I'm thinking in the future, you know, they're starting to get retainers and Rory is being trained up as either a ranger or maybe uh, an assassin or something like that. It's what... Uh, Blank is wanting. And so if Blank dies, then Blank can take over Rory, essentially. That's what we're going to move towards. 
That being said, I'm going to try and use some homebrew death saving rules that I found, which is essentially if once you get knocked down, if you're on zero, you are dying. That turn that you're down, another player has to um, roll you over to check you and they spend their action aiding you. And then you as a player, uh, you like your character that's down dying, has to roll a death save, which is, you know, a rule for, you know, save versus death is a is a thing in it and if you succeed then you uh, are on one hit point if you don't you die the thing is that puts the player to aid you in a very dangerous position because they could run over to do that and then next thing you know you're surrounded and you're dead right R rather than running and saving themselves or whatever also mass damage and everything like that that can still outright kill your spells and, and whatnot right but I kind of did this sort of on the fly because I was like, I can't let you die. I'm real, like, you know, blank. I'm not going to do this to you right now after, you know, after we're only a little in, right? We were like an hour and a half into the game and whatnot, into the camp uh, session. Another thing, Ivan's Cursed Ring. Now, I think I made a bit of a mistake here as well. The ring doesn't say anything about it being like stuck on your finger. And I completely understand that because of how much damage it actually does to you surely you should just be able to pull it off uh, so then you don't take the damage but then you would think okay well why does a player take it off they could just put it on in during the day and then take it off in the morning right before morning comes and so where I, I thought well what if you know it's a snake right I described it as a silver ring with a snake eating its own tail right an aurora boris or ouroboros sorry and so I thought, right, well, when he puts it on, it tightens around his finger. And when he pulls it more, it tightens even more. And he tried, you know, putting some oil on it and tried pulling it off and it didn't work. And so they decided, right, I'm going to have to lob my finger off. Luckily, he used his pinky finger. The archery competition came out of nowhere. Um, and that was a, a little sort of fun improvised thing. I was like, right, how are you doing this? How are you getting people around? And I got him to roll charisma. He rolled very poorly and i rolled in secret for a retainer check which is where rory came from because i was like right well you know what i don't want it to just be that he gets absolutely nothing from this he it's a fun nice idea so i rolled and rory was a successful retainer uh so yeah that was a fun little thing and we just we literally rolled it all out trying to hit apples and rory managed to get five in a not five in a row but he was the first to five, and so he won the competition. And Castle Coldwell is the next thing that they're going to go on to. It's also a level one starter dungeon. I don't think it's as well designed as the Tomb of the Serpent King. It's very much, enter this room, here's the thing. Go to the next room, here's the thing. While Tomb of the Serpent King is built to teach you how to do dungeons. That being said, it does have quite a bit of gold, and if my numbers are right, they should be able to level up just through doing this. I'm pretty sure if they go through all of the rooms of Castle Coldwell, the first part of Castle Coldwell, then at least some of them, at least Ivan, will level up. Which I'm sort of looking forward to because uh, they, you know, it's what, session five, session six we'll, we'll be going on to. But yeah, level two, I think, is interesting, uh, especially for Ivan, who literally has one spell and he wants a bit more. Hopefully he can get some scrolls. There is some scrolls in another dungeon that I've made, and I really want them to go there, because then he would have a bunch of just one-off spells that he can use, and it feels like he's got it in his repertoire. I might put in some scrolls at Castle Coldwell. I'm actually going to have to properly prep it for next week, so that's that's something. But yeah, really enjoyed the session. Great to actually do a dungeon. I, I'm really liking dungeons, actually. Um, just having played this one and then done the little miney thing, yeah, um, it's a nice environment to play in, I guess. Thank you very much for watching. Please give this a like and a share, uh, anything to help out, you know, tell, tell your friends about it. And I'll see you next week. Take care and look after yourself. Bye.